Well, good morning again, everybody. This is Lynn Gardner calling in from windy and cold, but very sunny and beautiful Virginia. I'm really glad to see a little sunshine today and, and I'll take it. That's enough for me to keep going. Even when it's cold, there's a, they're projecting just a little bit of snow tomorrow. Uh, not supposed to be much of anything at all, but I'm hoping that'll be the last snowfall. And guys, can you believe it? This is the last day of February. Man, it's hard to believe how time is flying by. We're getting ready to hit the third month of the year. And I hope that you're, you know, moving forward, you're revved up, you're successful in every way. You know, there's no end to the blessings in life. It's impossible to pick one, you know, outside of the blessing of Christ, of course. It's just like you look at all the blessings and it's really hard to just kind of pick one. For me, no doubt my children and now my grandchildren are unbelievable blessings to me. You know, I had the uh, direct responsibility and all the joys with my kids. And, and, and I did that, you know, I, I did my part for that generation, if you will. And now as a grandparent, my role is to reinforce the message I told to their parents, right? And sprinkle it with love while my children raise their own children. Just the thought that I was handpicked to be the mother of my gang and entrusted with raising up that godly generation is definitely my greatest blessing on this earth because the fruit of my labor is going to last for generation to generation. You know, despite myself, <laughs> they turned out to be amazing people. You know, they're people of God and they're, they're, they're responsible, they're great work ethic, they're fun, they're compassionate. It, it just boggles my mind when I look at them, right? I, I didn't have a good foundation to base my parenting on. So many times I really felt like I was flying by the seat of my pants. But I knew I had God, and I knew that he'd give me wisdom anytime I asked for it, and so I had that piece there. But there's another piece of that puzzle that led to my success as a mother. In fact, this piece will lead to success in any area of life. I learned this piece as part of my business journey decades ago. You know, when I was still doing the corporate world, I was, I was teaching Dale Carnegie time. That was a long time ago. And without even thinking about it, I applied it to my children. It had become second nature to me. My oldest daughter has no idea um, how much she blesses me. She's the mother of my oldest grandchildren, right? And, and she calls attention to some of the parenting ways that I you know, implemented, and now she's implementing them with her own family. We were discussing you know, the importance of how you talk to your child, and, and we were observing some people that we know that just don't get it right, and they're heading for a train wreck. You know, I always took the time to explain a correction to my children, to my employees, to my significant other, to anybody in my life. And I rarely had to explain it twice because of the way I communicated. I treated everybody, in this case, we're talking about my children, I treated them with respect. You know, I, I wanted it from them, so they got it from me, no matter what wrong they had committed. And frankly, there were some pretty serious wrongs along the way. They didn't get an emotional lecture from me filled with threats. I didn't beat my chest and remind them of who I am. I never threw in their faces all the things I did for them. I never made them feel like they owe me just because I gave birth to them, right? Instead, I worked hard to be the best communicator with some pretty serious messages, and I succeeded by doing a few things that everybody needs to do to communicate well in every area of your life, from your relationships, you know, to those with your children, to your faith, but especially today, for, in this case, for your business. So what's the secret? Well, first you tell them what you're gonna tell them, then you tell them, then you tell them what you told them. You know, you might be laughing if you've never heard that before. Some of you have and some of you haven't, but it's actually the strategy that many pastors use for their sermons, that three-part sermon you hear about. They don't run to the platform, get straight to the point, start beating you into submission. They set up a message in three parts. You know, tell them what you're gonna tell them, then tell them, then tell them what you told them, and it ends with a call to action in the pulpit and church and in every area of life. It's an age-old communication strategy that will never, ever fail you. I still apply this communication strategy without even thinking about it today, no matter who I'm talking to or what the situation is. You guys will often see it if you follow me on Facebook and you look at a spiritual message, you'll see that in play. You'll see that I'm, I'm telling you what I'm gonna tell you, then I tell you, then I tell you what I told you. And that's one of the reasons I think it resonates with so many people. So it's this whole interaction and observation with my oldest child and discussions that we've had recently that inspired the message today entitled, Three Parts to Every Success Story. If there's one mistake most people make, 
um, they, they muddle their way towards success in any area of life because they fail to do this. It, 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 they focus more on what they want to say than how the person is going to hear what they say, right? We tend to get straight to the point. We've only got a couple minutes. We're in fast motion. The information highway gives us our attention span is, is, is shrinking every day. So we get straight to the point and we overlook the importance of structuring the message for success. You know, in relationships and with our children, we often believe that we should only have to say something once and then change needs to happen. But most of the time when we use that strategy of say it one time, the positive results are limited only to somebody doing what you told them to do just to shut you up, to be honest with you, instead of really driving home the message with good communication so that you never ever have to go down the road again. When I observe business people, it boggles my mind because what we usually see is people telling people what they need to do or what they need to buy and skipping all the steps that come before and after. They go straight for the jugular without considering the importance of a three-part story. We don't begin with the first part of that process, you know, tell them what they're going to tell them. And we don't pick up at the end where we tell them what we told them and we ask for a call to auction. We just spit out what we think they need to, to know from where we sit. And although most of them will at least entertain the conversation, they really, a lot of them don't latch on because we failed to communicate the three parts. Believe it or not, the first part of that, you know, telling them what you're going to tell them is the most important part of all. Not what you tell them, but telling them what you're going to tell them. But most people will say, well, why don't I just tell them instead? Why do I want to do this? Because it's during that telling them, you know, what you're going to tell them that the entire conversation will be positioned for success. In a relationship, for instance, don't you think it would go over better uh, with other people if you said something like, you know, I'm going to share something with you and about how I'm feeling because I love you and I want to settle our differences and find our peace. Don't you think that would go over a little bit better more than, you know, you did this and I don't like it and I'm, I'm not a happy camper. You know, you begin with a positive explanation for what's coming next. You set the pace, you set the mood, and you set the attention span. It's that positive that gets their guard to go down. You know, the same, of course, is true for our children. Beating your chest and telling them how the West was won is not the way you set long-term patterns. You are in a position of authority, but you don't need to keep reminding. Don't you think it might be better if you begin with the first of three parts of your story? If you begin with something like, I love you, and I want to be sure that I do my part to help you not repeat that problem. Don't you see how saying that goes a lot farther than if either you do this or you're grounded? You know, in our faith, wow, how, I, I seldom do I hear people tell something, you know, that tell them what they're going to tell them. And instead they go straight for the kill, right? And, you know, you, but don't you think if you began by saying something like, I've got something to share with you, a solution for life, and within a few minutes, your life will never be the same again. You know, don't you think that will go over a lot better that you're a sinner if you don't listen to what I say, you're going to hell. You know, finally, the focus, uh, you know, for the call is for your business. So there aren't words to express the importance of the first part of that three-part message. You need to get their attention. You don't have long to impress people in any point in history, but especially today. You know, everybody's in a rush. You, whatever you say to open that conversation, you need to get their attention. You need to get their guard down a little bit, and you need to set the pace for the powerful message you actually have to share. And you do that in the first part, by telling them what you're going to tell them instead of just going for the kill and telling them what's on your mind. The first part is where you plant the seed of hope, no matter who you're talking to or what the message is, whether it's your relationships, it doesn't matter. Who it's, that's where you plant the seed of hope. It needs to be compelling. It needs to be compassionate. It needs to be, you know, said with some sense of excitement, right? Not doom and gloom that you're going to die from drinking water. You know, it needs to be filled with positive. It might begin with something like this. You know, sometimes I'll say, you know, what I'm about to share with you has the potential to profoundly change your life. And I'm not sure what you're going to do with what I share with you, but I am absolutely certain you'll be compelled to make some changes after you hear what I have to say. You know, what am I doing? I'm telling them without saying it, you better listen up because life is about to change for the good. When I say you'll be compelled to make some changes, I plant a seed that will inspire them to listen, even if they're only listening out of curiosity to see what I'm going to say, right? What do I care? I want them to listen and I do have something 
that can dramatically change their life. So after I set the pace, then I tell them. And when I tell them, I keep it short and sweet, and so should you. And when I'm finished telling them, I tell them what I told them. It might be that I say something like, now that you've heard what I had to share, I'm confident you'll be ready to make some changes. You know, I go on with something like that. That last part is your call to action. Whether you're dealing with your significant other, your child, your church, or your business, the last part is where the, you have the call to action. You have no idea the power you have to have tremendous and successful communications with every person in your life until you learn to apply three parts to your story. Working on the what you're going to tell them part and leave the science in the lab. Keep it out, keep it away, guys. You, you, remember, the attention span of people is shrinking every day. Get their attention and tell them fast, right? Leave that science in the lab where it belongs. Instead, make it compelling. You know, make it personal. Position it to inspire the other person to want to listen, you know, in, instead of just listening to humor you. Master that first part of your story because it sets the pace for everything that follows. You already know what you want to tell them. You already know everything. You've gone through the you know academy of uh, you know of, of ionization. You already know everything. You already know what you're going to tell them. That's the easy part. But if you go straight for the kill, like so many do in their relationships with their children, with their faith, and with their business, you're going to see the same re lame results too. Tell them what you're going to tell them and make it shine. Tell them simply without adding in all those things that nobody really needs to hear in 20 minutes or less. And, and when they buy, they'll buy based on what you told them you were going to tell them from that very first opening. That'll be the reason they buy. Remember, you're never, ever dealing with people of logic. You never have and you never will. You're dealing with people of emotion. So hit that emotion button with the first part and keep the second part simple. And then it's call to action. So what do you do, you know, with what I shared with you? You know, do, you know, you might say, uh, help me understand my part to make things better. If you're dealing in a relationship, you might say, how can I help you make those changes you're compelled to make? You might say, let's work together to be sure you don't have to go through all that pain again. Whatever it is, you have to have a call to action after you told them what you told them you were going to tell them. Part one, again, as a reminder, is instill excitement to hear what you have to say. Part two is tell them in short, sweet, and direct ways that reinforce what you told them you were going to tell. And part three, tell them what you just told them. Have it align with all the other parts and ask for a call to action. You know, you ask for action from everybody else in your life, you know, from your children to your maid. I mean, you ask for a call to action. Why would you not ask for a call to action when you're working a business. When you set it up with the three parts, it's as natural as the sunshine. You just go right into that call of action. Remember, there are always two sides to every story, no doubt about that, right? But there are three parts to every good and successful story in business and in life. Today, I told you what I was going to tell you. I told you, and then I told you what I told you. And if you want to see long-lasting results in life and success beyond your wildest imagination, guys, it doesn't matter the words you use necessarily or how much you know about ionization or whether you can quote chapter and verse everything in the Bible. What matters is how you position that conversation. And once you learn to do that, you, you won't believe the results that you'll get. Learn to communicate with purpose. Make your story three parts every time with everybody in your life. Tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. So you guys go work on your first part and determine to make every story in your life with every person you deal with, whether you just want to share something like a, a business, you want to share your faith, or you want to correct a child or fix a problem in your relationship at home. Do it in three parts. I'll see you guys at the top. I'll see you next week. Now you guys go make it a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.